Hello, my dear students, and welcome to our final lecture with this self-powered uh, sensing nodes, a course as a subdivision of a wireless sensor network course for postgraduate uh, students. Um, actually, the, the, the final lecture today is somehow related to slightly a different topic with respect to what we have already learned in the previous lecture. Today, I choose to talk about wireless charging techniques. Maybe from the first impression, you can get that wireless charging techniques are somehow not in focus with the uh, self-power nodes in general. However, maybe one of the techniques to boost the charging of your wireless sensor nodes is to use wireless charging from time to time or to enable this feature of wireless charging. This is typically happen when the nodes are um, of uh, unaccessible, uh, un unaccessible physically from your central nodes. For example, when you consider a very distributed wireless sensor nodes or maybe underwater communications or, or, or all this stuff. So in this case, uh, maybe it's not so easy to make a physical charging or what we can call a wired charging for your node. And sometimes you face a problem of a battery discharging or maybe that your energy harvesting source is due to some reason is temporarily un unavailable or whatever the reason is, then you can alternate your uh, process by using a uh, wireless charging techniques or something like that. But generally speaking, we can say that wireless charging techniques are very booming techniques nowadays, and they can be used for different applications. I think you already uh, maybe face some of these applications, maybe in electrical vehicles and mobile charging and other applications as well. So we will try to consider all this stuff today when we consider a very brief introduction about the principles of wireless charging techniques. Um, okay. So now we can have our PowerPoint slides, as you can see here, and let's start together this uh, wireless charging, um, wireless charging techniques lecture. Okay. So generally, what is the aim here? As you can see, the aim is to provide a reliable alternative of charging without the constraints related to the physical or the wild charging. This is the general aim. Maybe you are trying to reduce cost, you are trying to increase efficiency as well as usual, but the main issue is to avoid the standard physical wild charging. The advantages of these wild charging techniques can be shown in different Perspective. So, from one hand, uh, these wild charging techniques provide a very continuous re uh, periodic manner of charging. So, for example, you can have a daily charging pattern, or maybe every two days, or whatever, in a very periodic manner, without without any arrangements or without any physical interpretation. It's something that will happen automatically between the source and the, or as we will see the first or the, 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 the central node and the uh, uh, charging node as we will see later on. No wires, of course, reduce costs somehow, save power transfer, transmission and eliminate sparks and debate associated with wire content. So this is the advantages of having such a wire technique in in this case, but how we can see, I'm sorry, yeah, yes, uh, how we can see this wireless charging technique. So principally, I, I will divide the wireless charging technique or the wireless charging, te uh, the wireless charging system into three portions. The core portion is the wireless portion, how we are going to, tr to deliver the power. This is considered maybe the main distinguishing part for different techniques of having a wire charging technique. So this part here, okay. So uh, by the way, this is a circuit uh, captured from literature. So I will I will mention this in the 
a comment to, to, to just to cite this um, topology. So the core here, we, what we, where I, I'm putting this uh, blue, uh, maybe rectangle, is the core of the charging technique itself. As we will see in the next slide, this can be an inductive, a capacitive, a resonance, what we can call a near field or another far field techniques and so on. So here you can distinguish or you can classify your wireless charging technique based on the nature of how you are going to transfer this power wirelessly. However, this is not only the power charging technique system. There is what we can call a backstage or maybe using our previous terminology, what we can call an interfacing circuits to this charging technique. So you have a, a transmitter interfacing circuit, which we can represent in this circuit. So this is the circuit interfacing the, the transmitter. And we have also a receiver interfacing circuit, which is this one. So it's not only the process of transmitting power wirelessly. Maybe this is the most challenging process in the story. However, we still need a transferring circuit or a transferring uh, interfacing circuit between in the transmitter side and in the receiver side as well. So this is also will be considered during this uh, lecture, again, in a very uh, brief way. So um, this is how we see uh, the... This is how we see the system. So what are the different techniques that we can use to wirelessly transfer power? Of course, generally, we can classify charging techniques into a wired and wireless. Definitely the wired, which is the one on the left-hand side of this diagram, is not of our interest, either in AC or a DC format. So what we are mainly concerned about is the right-hand side of the diagram, which is the wireless charging techniques. While charging techniques may be classified into near field techniques and the far field techniques, and I think that most of you who, who have already studied electromagnetisms can understand the, the, the meaning beyond near field and far field related to the distance between the transmitter and the receiver. So when you consider a near field techniques, we have the three famous near field techniques, inductive, which is the top famous uh, technique, capacitive and resonance, uh, charging and on the far field techniques we have laser microwave and radio frequency or what we can call the uh, radio wave or what we can call our RF techniques. So these are the main or the most famous techniques used in wireless charging. Maybe during this lecture we are we are we are going only to give focus on this inductive wireless wireless charging because simply it's the most efficient and the most widely used technique nowadays. However, you can grab literature and you will can you can find a lot about different techniques but before going deeply or slightly deeply on uh, into the uh, wireless uh, inductive wireless charging technique we have to um, we have to have a macroscopic view how we classify these techniques or how not actually classify how we evaluate these techniques when i say that okay this is the, the inductive is better than capacitive Better in terms of what? So there is, of course, a, a lot of parameters that you can use to evaluate these wise charging techniques. But principally, the more the most three important parameters are the distance. I mean, the maximum distance between the transmitter and the receiver, the power that can be delivered, the maximum power that can be delivered, and of course, what is very important for us, which is the efficiency. Because definitely, whenever you are considering a wire system, even a wire system, we have what's called the losses, and we can easily expect that in a wireless com in a wireless power transmission, the losses will be slightly greater than what is the case when we transmit or when we charge in a wired manner. So we have to ex expect losses. That's why we have to recognize the term efficiency here. So let's start to explore this number and see how this number have a big meaning in our case. For example, when we consider the inductive way, which is the most uh, commonly used term nowadays. So the distance is around 30 centimeters. So you can see that the distance is not so large. We, but 
there is a very good selling point here that you can transmit up to 1K, 1 kilowatt. That's why most likely in high power application uh, or what we can call in power electronics, we usually use in inductive whilst charging, for example, in electrical vehicles where you need relatively high power in charging your electrical vehicle battery. And the efficiency is a considerable good. This is 90% efficiency here. On the other hand, let's see another extreme. When you go for a capacitor while charging with a very low distance, a very, very low distance, uh, relatively low power, it's 10% of the inductive case and relatively high efficiency, 24%. But here it's only 4% enhancement efficiency with a very low distance contact distance between the transmitter and the receiver and relatively low power. That's why you don't see capacitive charging is very famous nowadays. A third one, which is relatively also good, which is the resonance. Here in the resonance, you can see that it's very promising as we have nearly the same as the inductive with better power delivery up to 100K and uh, efficiency can reach 95%. But please expect that these numbers are to what extent some sort of theoretical number. So whenever it comes to physical implementation, as you will see later on, this will not typically be the same. On the other hand, you can easily expect that when you go to a far field, uh, when you go to a far field study, you will find relatively higher distances. So for example, in laser, you can transmit up to 1K kilometer, same applied for microwave and even for radio frequency or the radio wave, you can reach up to 10 kilometer. So this is relatively higher. This is very logic because these techniques are far field. But on the other hand, you find a lower maximum power. So it's a 500 watt or maybe 250 watt in case of uh, a microwave. And there is also another issue related to what we can call the LOS or the line of sight. So for example, when we consider a laser power transmission, okay, theoretically we can reach up to one kilometer, but this one kilometer of line of sight, I mean, the trans trans transmitter and the receiver can see each other. That's why this is somehow not widely used because it's not so easy to guarantee a one kilometer with line of sight connections. That's why this is a bit challenging in this case. So this is generally how we can see the main parameter affecting the overall process or maybe evaluating the overall process of your device. But please consider that. Maybe I see, I, I, I consider that, for example, that in inductive is more commonly used than capacitive because inductive is with 1K watt and 30 centimeters. But on the other hand, this might differ when your prospective change. So for example, when you consider a high power application like electrical vehicles, you usually observe this number, which is how or how much or what is the maximum amount of energy of power that can be transferred wirelessly. But when we consider an IoT application, a wire sensor network, for example, a wire sensor node with a relatively low power of consumption, herein, this number is not so important. Maybe you consider the efficiency, for example. So you go for capacitor, for example, when the distance is not ideal and you are considering a low power application, then maybe the efficiency is much more important here. So the evaluation process itself depends on the application. It's not an absolute process. You cannot say that inductive is, is the best everywhere. This is not correct because your application may, 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 be, may influence your decision. So whenever you consider, for example, low power application, this 1K watt is not so important. You are not going to power your wireless node with one kilowatt. So this is not a, a considerable parameter here. So maybe efficiency is more important. So this is how we can see the evaluation parameter of different uh, wireless charging techniques. But let's go to our main focus today, which is the wireless charging technique using inductive wireless charging technique. And here, what we are going to do now is just, I'm going to explore to you 
what is the main component of this block diagram? Or why, why we are using this block diagram? What is the role of the interfacing circuit in the transmitter? What is the role of the interfacing circuit in the receiver? How we are managing all these steps? So let's see. Okay, so principally, whenever we have um, an inductive uh, um, uh, uh, an inductive charging technique. So we say that we have a primary coil and a secondary coil. So the primary coil is the source or the transmitter from a communication terminology. So we have a, a, a node or a coil that transmits the power, we call the primary coil. And we have a, a node that receives the power, we call it the secondary coil. So first of all, whenever you are going to design a coil, of course, there is some important parameters that you should consider. For example, the number of turns, the diameter of the material, the diameter of the, the coil, the material you are using. Here we are using copper. Um, so um, it's a substrate where, where you are going to make the, your coil above. So sometimes we are using a magnetic substrate with some UR or permeability. Sometimes we are using uh, um, insulators. Uh, for example, glass. We have some uh, previous publication where we consider glass as the uh, as the, 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 the um, as the main uh, 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 substrate or the holding substrate. So, so this can differ from one application to another. Of course, it's totally out for, outside the focus of this course to go to go into the design parameter of a coil. I'm just exploring what are the design parameters. Maybe in other uh, specified electromagnetic uh, courses, you can deal a bit more about how you can design a coil. By the way, we are uh, here using constant physics usually for doing such simulations for this uh, uh, coils or primary and secondary coil. Okay, so this is the first coil, but there is a very important block diagram. Maybe when you see the, 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 the first, um, to the first uh, impression when you see the the, 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 the circuit I, I, I mentioned, you, you see this NE555 uh, IC, this, this IC. So what is the function of this IC? This is a very interesting point to understand and to know. Generally speaking, we use DC power in to make in charging. Typically, when you just pick up your laptop or your mobile phone charger and see this head, which is connected to the socket, you find that this is an AC to DC converter because usually we use an DC for charging, either laptops, uh, mobile phones, or whatever, maybe it's your smartwatch or whatever. So usually we are using DC for charging. It's, it's better, it's, it's uh, less time consumption and every way. But a coil or an inductor is an AC element. So you cannot transmit power through an inductor using, uh, 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 using a, 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 an AC power transmission. You cannot transmit a DC power. You have to turn this DC power into an AC power. So this is a very critical step in the transmitter side, or as we can call in the primary coil side, in the interfacing circuit of a primary coil. You have to convert your AC, so, uh, your DC power into an AC power to be a, a impact or to impact your inductive using an inductive uh, capacitor. So here, the frequency the pulse of the high frequency pulses, which is usually from 50 to 40 to 50 kilohertz, is a very critical parameter. Later on, I will maybe in the end of this lecture, I will show you the main parameter affecting the the uh, the process of making uh, 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 um, uh, the process of uh, making uh, uh, um, um, a, a, or the sorry, the process of um, or the parameters affecting the uh, the the, the, the wireless charging process. One of the major parameters affecting the wireless charging process is the frequency. So you can tune the frequency using this triple five um, timer, so that is that you can alternate the frequency based on your application requirements and so on. And usually, when we are going, when we do simulations. What we are one of the parameters we are examining is plotting the efficiency of your power transmission versus 
the frequencies. This is a very interesting curve to see when you examine your wall charging technique, even especially when it's inductive. Then we have a transistor. We, we use a BGT transistor. So let's go back. This BGT transistor, this, this is usually a boosting amplifier. So here, this is a boosting amplifier that, that boosts the the circuit or that boosts the, uh, the, 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 the the voltage or the power of your, uh, uh, actually the, the voltage, not the power, it, it, that boosts the voltage of, of your operating voltage to scale it up uh, to a higher value. And also it is also act as a switch here, you know, that this, uh, you can use this um, base, uh, base element to switch on and off your transmission. So whenever you, uh, you, 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 you are not transmitting a data, you can send a zero signal here and then no data is transmitted. And then the switch is off. Once you have a high frequency or like once you have an uh, 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 your high pulse of uh, frequency, which is as, as we mentioned, 50 to, 40 to 50 kilohertz, then it starts to be boosted in terms of voltage to reach the uh, uh, primary coil as we know. So this is uh, the, the role of the, a bipolar junction transistor here. Of course, most of the time we have to add a heat sink to, 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 to manage this um, process. Then let's go to uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the other, or I think, yeah, we have to go to the other side, which is the secondary coil side. So this is the secondary coil side. Here, we have a secondary coil side. Uh, this is the secondary coil side is the receiver side. Again, you have to design this Secondary coil side with a typical number of turns, the substrate material, the material of the coil itself, the diameter of the of the uh, 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 of the rotations, all these design parameters as equal as the um, the case when we are using uh, uh, the, the the primary coil. So it's the same manner, but now again remember that we have to return back to a DC. We, we convert our signal from DC to AC using this triple five timer to have an impulsive way. Now we have to return back to a DC. That's why we need a rectifier or what we call a bridge rectifier. So the role of this bridge rectifier, let's go back to the circuit. So the role of this bridge rectifier is to return back to the normal state where we have a, a DC uh, a voltage and Remember again that you make some sort of uh, amplification here to your voltage value using this transistor. So you have to buck again. I think we already have a complete lecture uh, concerning the buck converter. So you have to buck again your voltage or to step down your voltage to the needed voltage level you are uh, you are using using a buck uh, converter. So this is the complete process. Let's see it on uh, this manner. So we have first a timer to create a pulse of frequency with a certain frequency range you, you choose. Then we have an amplifier using a BGT, a power amplifier, an outstage power amplifier. And then we have a inductor. This inductor is the primary in inductor or the primary coil to transmit power. After re reception, you receive the, the power using a secondary coil. Then you return it back from DC, from AC to DC using this rig air bridge. And finally, we have this uh, back converter. Usually we use this capacitor. So I can now, I think I put this slide in the wrong way. So you can use this um, uh, capacitor to uh, restore the energy coming because, because as you know, you have an, a, a pulse of energy, that's why we have a high and low, and that's why we have a, a normal charging discharging process that comes here to your uh, to your network with a discharging potentiometer resistance to to tune the charging uh, the charging time. Of course here the charging uh, discharging process is affected by the charging frequency, uh, sorry the uh, potentiometer value and also is affected by the frequency as well. Uh, which is a source or, or which is a parameter defined by the source itself. So these are the main elements. Now, as I just mentioned, what is the parameter affecting this wallet charging module? Uh, one of the very important and very logic parameter to affect is the distance. So the higher the distance you could 
expect that the higher the losses and the, the lower the efficiency. So this is very normal. And that's why when, if you remember my slide in the beginning of the lecture, I mentioned that the maximum distance with an acceptable efficiency is a key parameter of evaluating an, a wireless charging technique. So you, you consider that, for example, I'm targeting 90% efficiency. So how, what is the maximum distance that can, can still survive this 90% efficiency? So here you can distinguish techniques. So of course, the distance is a, fee, a, a key parameter here. And another very key parameter, of, of course, also is a frequency. How the frequency affecting this um, uh, um, how the frequency affecting this. For example, this is a very straightforward equation to determine the voltage uh, in the secondary coil as a function of frequency of the of the transmitter. As we mentioned, that the frequency is a parameter to be defined in the transmitter side, in the primary primary side. So, for example, here n times four point four four times f, which is frequency times the flux, which is the magnetic flux um, uh, uh, induced in the coil. So. Here you can see that the, the voltage received in the secondary coil is directly proportional to the frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the voltage received in the secondary coil. But as I mentioned, it's not that straightforward relation. That's why we usually plot a um, graph showing the efficiency of the wireless charging technique versus the frequency to pick the frequency at which your efficiency is maximum. This is usually happen whenever you are, we are designing an inductive wireless charging technique. Okay, so that's all from our side, not only for this lecture, but maybe for the, the whole course. By this lecture, we have terminated the whole course with our self-powered node under the wireless sensor network course. Thank you very much for your concentration during the whole course. I hope that we do something good for you. Thank you very much and see you later on in other courses.